My lab has been interested in photosynthesis for many years. And the reason we're interested in photosynthesis is that the organisms that take sunlight and transform them into chemical energy, this is photosynthesis, green algae, cyanobacteria, and plants, they do an amazing thing. One of the most important things, however, is that these organisms, they know how to protect themselves. Many times, the light is just too strong. And if it is illuminated too strongly, they'll just die of too much light. So they have to find a way to protect themselves. It was believed for many years that a certain protein is able to protect from overexcitation by having a certain molecule come in close proximity to other molecules. That's what was believed. In our study, which was recently published, what we found is that this protein, instead of bringing the molecule in proximity, it actually burrows itself into what we call an antenna protein. The antenna protein is just like our regular antenna for a TV, which collects waves, but it collects the sunlight and takes all of this energy and pumps it into what we call the reaction center. That's where photochemistry happens. What we found is that this one protein, it actually burrows itself in, it opens it up, and by opening it up, it's like disconnecting a cord. And now, instead of the energy flowing into the reaction center and burning it, it flows out as heat, and the cyanobacteria that we work with protect themselves. And when the light goes down, this protein comes out, and the energy starts flowing back into the reaction center. Basically, this is a molecular switch. It's a true molecular switch. It's just like a switch at home, which you can flip on and flip off. And what's doing the flipping here is a protein which understands how much light is being hit at any one time. We have many goals in the lab when we research photosynthesis. We are interested in the basic science of understanding how evolution brought about these fantastic mechanisms which are able to deal with such changing environments. But on the other side, we also have interest in making life better. And making life better means a way to make clean energy. And clean energy, in the end, the best way to do that is to use the sun, sunlight. Now, sunlight is sometimes very weak and sometimes it's very strong. When it's very weak, the uh, solar cells that we have today are very inefficient because they were developed for high light. We think that we can use the same types of mechanisms developed in organisms, in bacterial organisms, other biolog biological organisms, in our design of synthetic solar cells so that they will change themselves in the way that they will absorb light when the light is low and still be efficient and will know how to protect themselves in high light so that they're not damaged. Bacteria are able to fix themselves. A typical solar cell may not be able to fix itself. So we have to integrate within it the same properties which will be able to turn on and turn off in a automatic fashion. And this is what we discovered. We discovered a molecular switch which turns itself on and turns itself off depending on the level of light. These are the kind of things we'd like to integrate in the future in, in hybrid solar cells or even synthetic solar cells.